Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and welcome to another day in the fish room. So recently I've been getting a lot of questions, and today I want to give you guys a couple of answers. These questions regard the fish in this fish room, and just also general aquarium questions. So we're just going to get straight to it. So the first question is, what happened to my African cichlid tank? I tried to make a video showing you guys that last last time, but um, my audio got deleted, so all you saw was just still shots and pictures, and you have to guess what happened. But my African cichlids, um, I no longer have them. I rehomed them, and the main reason is because I just really wasn't as passionate as I was before with my African cichlids, and I'm talking about my Great Rift cichlids, the cichlids from Lake Malawi, Victoria, Lake Tanganyika. Um, the sad thing is that those were some of the oldest fish that I've had. I started this hobby with African cichlids, but yeah, like I said, I wasn't really as passionate as I was for them when I first started, and um, I just felt like I could use this aquarium for better things. So I no longer have the African cichlids, instead I have a group of grow-outs. Um, in the future, this may become a breeding tank, but for now I have my now tilapia. You see three of them right there in the middle. Um, I have some red Texas, I have a small Cuban cichlid, a vieja, and just a mix of cichlids that I'm growing out for different purposes in the fish room. I still have my clown loaches. I'm definitely going to keep those. But yeah, I couldn't keep the African cichlids anymore just because um, I really wasn't getting that same enjoyment from them. So switching over to New World cichlids, we'll see um, whether or not this was a good decision in the time to come. But first question taken care of. Next question is, someone asked me, will I ever try to add my Mel Feste to my 350 gallon South American aquarium? Um, I've tried last week. You can see them in there. Last week I tried to add them. It didn't work out, so I put them in this 55 gallon for timeout. This 55 gallon, all those fish in here used to be in here, so I had this empty 55. So he was in this for 55, for 55. He was in this for timeout. Um, and then yesterday I decided to try to add him again, and obviously he's back in timeout because he's just a very misbehaved fish. You can see I have a little goldfish in here, and that's because he was hiding. And I put the goldfish to get him to be a little bit, look at he's peeking at me. But yeah, I put the goldfish just to make him a little bit more comfortable. But yeah, he is definitely not going to be able to live in this aquarium. And the main reason is because I guess he looks, in his mind, my peacock bass looks just like him. So he has no problems with any of the other fish except this large peacock bass. And if we come closer, you see the side of his body, all those scratches. Um, that's because the feste was chasing him and the peacock, guy, the peacock bass was panicking and he would run into like the glass, he would run into the top, he would run into the driftwood, into rocks and he really scratched up his body really bad and I know that this isn't really serious, it's going to heal like in a week or so but definitely these peacock bass are like the main reason why I bought this large aquarium so I'm definitely not going to let these guys be stressed out. So now the feste, he's stuck in this aquarium because he used to live inside my 210, now my 210 has some smaller fish that he will eat, so he's going to have to stay in here for a couple of months, um, and just hopefully either I'll get a female for him and try to let him breed in that aquarium, or just let him live inside my 55. So yeah, that's the best day. Okay everyone, so I have one more question to answer for you guys, and it's definitely a big one, it's going to take the majority of this video. So a couple of you guys asked me just some examples of some good catfish that are ideal for our aquariums. We all know we could go to just about any local fish store with $20 and come out with a monster catfish that gets way too big. In my local fish store, I could go and buy a red tail catfish for $15. And without a doubt, a red tail catfish could outgrow my largest aquarium, which is 350 gallons. Um, tiger shovelnose you could get, iridescent sharks, perun sharks, channel catfish. You could go in your local fish store and you could get all these catfish. And no doubt most people can't take care of these catfish. So what are some catfish that are ideal that you could go and that you could keep long term? So today I want to list for you guys 20 catfish that are ideal for most aquarists. Now for the most part these catfish that I'm about to list, I'm just going to give you guys a picture, a name, and brief information. So it's up to you guys to do the research to figure out if these guys are worthy of your aquarium. But for the first catfish on this list, which is probably going to be my favorite out of all the ones that I'm about to list, I do have some video, I have two of them living inside this 350 gallon aquarium and they are my four line Pictus catfish, one of which is right here, this guy being about 10 inches long and then as we come to the opposite side of the aquarium we have another one down there underneath that driftwood, you can see he's, you, I'm not sure how well you can see it but he's under there and yeah I have two of them. Now the first thing I love about these catfish is just the way they're built. 
I believe that these guys just really have that Amazon look. They are from Amazon, but you know all those Amazon catfish, the red tail catfish, the shovel nose catfish, they have these certain type of bodies that I think most people are attracted to. A nice long slender look in a way kind of looks like a shark. And this guy definitely has that same type of body. So firstly, I love the way these catfish look. And on top of that, these catfish don't get too small. And at the same time, they don't get too big. These guys can reach 14 inches, which is great for most aquariums. Well, not for most, but for larger aquariums, like aquariums with these larger fish. Um, a red tail catfish can eat all these fish in its aquarium. This guy, he's not going to eat anybody, but at the same time, he's not going to be eaten, which is definitely important in his hobby. So yeah, once again, this guy is about 10 inches. He's going to grow to 14 inches. It took him about two years to reach this 10 inch mark. This guy over here is about, as I said, seven inches and it took them about one year to get that size. Uh, they still have that same appetite as those larger catfish to eat anything I put into the aquarium. They are a little bit shy, but the thing is with these catfish, they are naturally schooling catfish. Usually they live in groups. So for the most behavior, all you have to do is provide a school of about maybe five or more, and they're definitely gonna be a lot more active. So definitely my favorite on this list because of just their ideal size, um, which, when it comes to aquarium size, if you keep one, um, a 75 gallon is okay, but the thing is with one, you're not gonna get as much activity. If you keep multiple, like five or more, you're definitely gonna get a lot more activity and they're gonna be a lot more active when the lights are on. Now, being that I only have two, it's kind of the same rule with cichlids. When you keep like a colony, a colony of cichlids, you gotta have five or more because when you have two, the more dominant shows too much aggression towards the less. The same way it is with these catfish. Um, is either five or more or just one because now that I have two but the thing is I have this big aquarium so I get away with just two but the thing is if they were in a smaller aquarium this bigger one is a lot more aggressive to the smaller one that's the reason why they're so far apart but the thing is if I was to get more it would definitely break that aggression out so yeah that's the first catfish on this list it is the four line pick this catfish a little bit hard to find that's the reason why I didn't why I don't have a full school already because they are a little bit difficult to find. I only found them online, but if you do find them, they definitely are a catfish worth keeping. The next catfish on this list is in the same family as the previous catfish, and it is a spotted Pictus catfish. So Pictus catfish, the four line, the spotted, both of them are part of the Pamelias family. The spotted Pictus catfish being the most common, you can find these at PetSmart, Petco, and they definitely are the more common variety. Um, the thing about these is that they still have that nice slick body um, and just the nice fins and everything. These guys have spots. They only reach about six inches, but just like the last species, they are a schooling group of fish and you can definitely keep a group of them and they will have a lot more activity and just look awesome. These spotted pictures catfish can live in a 55 gallon or larger. And the thing is these catfish have sharper, sharp barbs around their fins. So that means that if you do keep them with larger cichlids, um, they have a small possibility of being eaten, which is very good. The next catfish on this list is the banjo catfish. Now if it wasn't for these peacock bass in my aquarium, I definitely would have kept them. Um, these catfish, the cool thing about them is that they like to burrow in your substrate if you have sand. And it looks really awesome because they bury their body and only like their head sticking out. And it's just a really awesome effect. Now the thing is these banjo catfish only reach about 6 inches and I'm afraid that my peacock bass will eat them and that's the only reason why I haven't bought them yet. Or if I do find another aquarium suitable, I will get them because they definitely are some very cool catfish to keep. The next catfish on the list are Hoplo catfish. These catfish are more peaceful. They have a very small mouth, which means they can live with smaller fish without the worry of eating them. Um, they reach about six inches, which I'd say a 55 gallon or larger is best. They are schooling fish. And the best thing about these Hoplo catfish is that they're really not as nocturnal as most other catfish. If you do provide a school, and if you don't keep them with fish that are too aggressive, you will be able to see a nice amount of activity and they just will be a lot more active compared to most catfish when the lights are on. The next catfish on this list is the Farwella catfish, also known as the Twig catfish. I love these catfish because just like the banjo catfish, these catfish have awesome camouflage. I forgot to mention about the banjo is that if you do provide sand, when this catfish go, does burrow, he doesn't go far away. He would do it right in front of the glass. So you can still see him burrowing because he trusts in his camouflage. And the same thing with this Twig catfish. If you do provide a lot of driftwood, you won't have to worry about um, this catfish going and hiding under a rock or something like that. This catfish will sit right there in front of you on a driftwood, trusting in its camouflage. So the twig catfish, another awesome catfish. They reach about six inches, and you can put them in a 40, a 40 gallon aquarium or larger, and they are peaceful, so you don't have to worry about them swallowing your community fish. 
Similar to the toy catfish, the next catfish is the whiptail catfish. So these catfish are peaceful. You can keep them in your community aquarium with no problems. They reach about six inches. And once again, these catfish rely on camouflage. Now, in case you haven't kept many catfish, there's a big difference between a catfish that relies on camouflage versus a catfish that relies on hiding. A catfish that hides, you really won't see until you come at night with a flashlight. But a catfish that relies on camouflage, if you look carefully, you can always find it in sight. And that's one of the reasons why I love these catfish that rely on camouflage. These whiptail catfish, I used to keep one, and he will sit right in front of the glass, and it's just always awesome to just come and look at him do his thing. Similar to that, we have the royal whiptail catfish. These get a little bit larger, they get about eight inches, and they just have a royal look to them. They have a little bit more shape to them, and they definitely look awesome. And once again, they rely on their camouflage, so you don't have to go searching in your aquarium as long as you provide a, a nice amount of driftwood, they're just gonna hook onto a piece of driftwood and just sit there and look awesome. The next catfish on the list is the hognose brooches, which is pretty much a larger version of the Corderas catfish. These hognose brooches can reach about four inches. And you know, your standard quarry only reaches about two inches. So when I first discovered these catfish, they definitely were on my wish list. And I think it's just awesome. They are just as peaceful as Corridors, just as active, but you get a nice four inch size, which I think looks amazing. Next, we have the Raphael catfish. So there are two varieties of the Raphael catfish. You have the striped Raphael. I have one. Um, these catfish can reach about eight inches. And then you have the spotted Raphael, which reaches about um, six inches. The cool thing about these Raphael catfish is that their body is really hard. They have a lot of spikes all around them, which makes them perfect for more aggressive fish. Um, you can keep them with cichlids with no problem because the cichlids really can't do a lot of damage because they have such an armored body. Now, the only bad thing about these Raphael catfish is one, they grow very slowly, and two, they are a lot more nocturnal. I guess maybe if you have a little bit more, like keep a groove of them, they may be a little bit more active. But the one I have, I can't provide footage of them because this guy is always hiding and I only could come at night with a flashlight to catch him. And that's the only downside about the Raphael catfish. Now the next species of catfish on this list is going to be the largest out of all the catfish that I list today. And it is the Lima Chevanose catfish, also known as the Duckbill catfish. Now these catfish do get pretty big, they can reach 18 inches, however, if you have a 180, they can live in a 180 or larger. Now the reason why I decided to include these is because I know these larger aquariums are more common today. I have a 210. I know a lot of people have 220s, 180s. These larger aquariums are a little bit more easy to get and more people are doing their research and getting these larger aquariums. But you know, you get a red tail cat, it's going to outgrow it. You get a regular tiger chevinose, it's going to outgrow it. These lima chevinose, they get about 18 inches, which is a nice, decent size. You get a decent sized catfish, which is pretty big, but you don't have to worry about them eating all your other fish. And at the same time, you don't have to worry about them just being so big that they can't turn around. So for those of you who have a 180, who have a 210, a 220, or just a aquarium um, six feet long with at least two feet of width, um, the Lima Chevanos is definitely an option for you. Anything smaller than that, then you definitely don't want to get involved with the Lima Chevanos. But these catfish are a little bit more active. I currently have a juvenile living inside my 210. And I love the fact that these catfish don't hide. They're always swimming around and I'm um, just, very interesting catfish. Now all the catfish that I previously listed, they all have something in common, and that is the fact that they all originate from South America. So those were all South American catfish that are ideal for most aquariums. Just in case you wanna do like a biotope aquarium where you keep all the fish from the same region, it's also good to know where your fish are from because it's easier to match parameters with all the fish in your aquarium to get more success. So those were all from South America, and this next group is gonna come from Africa. So these African catfish that I'm about to list, they're all in the same family of Cynodon, these are the most popular groups or species of catfish coming from Africa. And you have a wide assortment, but this is going to be the list of the ones that I think are best. So the first one is Cynodonus eruptus, also known as the feather fin catfish. If you follow me, and if you follow me for a while now, you know that I kept one a while back. I have some awesome footage of one of them like feeding off of my peacock bass. But these catfish, I love the fact that they're very versatile. You can put them in all different types of aquariums. Um, I started off mine inside a peaceful aquarium. They may be a little bit more aggressive towards bottom feeders and other bottom dwellers. So you do gotta consider that. Like mine was aggressive toward loaches and stuff like that and other catfish. But if you, if they are the only fish on the bottom, they can live in community aquariums. They have a very small mouth, so they really can't eat any, like a lot of fish. They only can eat really small fish, so that's a good thing. I also kept mine in my African cichlid tank and they did well. And I also kept mine 
in my predator aquarium with my large oscars and predatorial fish and they did fine. So I love the fact that these catfish are very versatile. My feather fin catfish had just a very unique shape. I love his tall fins. And just a very awesome catfish to keep. Um, they reach about 8 inches, not including their height. Their height was about maybe 7 inches. So a very nice tall catfish and just a very unique looking catfish for your aquarium. Definitely a great consideration if you're doing like an African cichlid tank or predator aquarium or just if you want a cool looking catfish, Cynodonus eruptus is definitely going to be a great choice. Next we have Cynodonus multipunctatus, if I pronounced that correctly, also known as the cuckoo catfish. These catfish are great for African cichlid aquariums. Um, I read that they can reach about 8 inches but the largest I ever saw in person was 6 inches. The cool thing about these catfish is that they naturally come from the Great Rift Lakes and the thing is you probably saw the documentary when the Malawi cichlids or not Malawi, the Tanganyika cichlids lay their eggs. You know they mouth brew so they put the eggs in their mouth and the catfish actually sneak their eggs into the mouth. Now I know Mabuna Marcus, he's another YouTuber, um, he has footage of these catfish in his aquarium doing the same thing as African cichlids breeding and then they sneak eggs into the, cat, into the cichlids mouth, the, the baby catfish eats the cichlids inside the mother's mouth and then comes out. It's crazy, check out his channel so that you can um, see that for yourself. But these catfish are awesome, once again they do best foot with African cichlids because they come naturally from those same waters. Um, they're best kept in schools and the more you keep the more active they are and definitely a great option for um, cichlid aquariums. Okay, I have a few more species of Cynodonus catfish that I'm going to give you guys to be a part of this list but I'm not going to go into such a great detail because I don't want this video to be too long. So just know that these catfish do require similar care. For the most part it's best if you either keep them solo or if you do keep them in groups. When you do keep them in groups you will get a lot more activity but it's definitely not a good option to keep maybe two or three because the most dominant will be a lot more aggressive towards the least dominant. So it's either solo or group um, and they are very versatile. I've seen these catfish that I'm about to list. I've seen them in African cichlid tanks. I've seen them kept with New World cichlids. I've seen them kept in communities. So you know they are very versatile. It's just a matter of experimenting and um, availability in your area. So the first one is Cynodonus acellifer which can reach about eight inches. Then you have Cynodonus petricola, which could reach about 5 inches. Cynodonus nigrita, which could reach about 7 inches. The cool thing about this catfish is that it has a nice gold body. Pretty much like a gold version of the Cynodonus catfish. Um, you have Cynodonus nigrintris. I know I'm doing terrible with these name pronunciations, so I do apologize about that. But yeah, this is the upside down catfish. Um, I did want to do a aqua an aquarium with these. I love the way they swim upside down. Um, they are peaceful and they definitely are eye catcher, so definitely a great option. Then you have Cynodonus decorous, a larger species that can reach about 10 inches. And finally Cynodonus angelicus, which reach about 8 inches, which has a nice spotted body and just a very nice look to it. Once again, all these catfish um, do best in groups. As far as activity level, you will be able to see them more if you do keep them in schools. Now there are a lot more different species of Cynodonus catfish. I think this is like a total of 40 something. So it's definitely a lot of them. Um, you just have to do your research, figure out what's next to you, what's available, and um, go from there. And that is the list of African, African catfish if you want to do like an African biotope or just if you want catfish from that region. Okay everyone, so to finish off the list we have two catfish coming from Asia. So the first one is the glass catfish. Definitely a catfish that's still on my list. These catfish grow to be about 4 inches and they have a nice transparent body. These catfish are schooling catfish so the more you keep the more active they will become. And they definitely are a nice catfish for your community aquarium. And then after that the final catfish on this list is the eclipse catfish also known as the sun catfish. Now the weird thing about this catfish is that when I was reading up on it I read that they have a size, a maximum size of anywhere between 12 to 18 inches and it's weird for a catfish to have such a wide size range and I'm guessing it's because um, the different sizes of aquariums are kept in. Out of all catfish I believe that these are adaptable more compared to other catfish. Um, I know cat, at PetSmart they sell them and they say that the, rec the recommended size is 55 gallons so I'm guessing a lot of people do keep them in 55 gallon aquariums and because of that they max at about 12 inches and that's the reason why they have such a wide range of size. But naturally in a while these catfish reach 18 inches so we're going to say that their maximum size is 18, 18 inches and because of that I recommend a minimum aquarium size of let's say 90 gallons. But of course these catfish, like most catfish, they do 
um, show more activity when you do keep them in numbers. So I'd always recommend at least a six foot aquarium. And they definitely are some awesome looking catfish. Every time I see them, they're kept with Central and South American cichlids, so I'm guessing they can handle a little bit more aggressive aggression. They do have some pretty decent sized mouths, so you don't want to keep them with fish that are like two inches or smaller. Um, they definitely are just another cool looking catfish, very unique looking catfish. I know JMO cichlids, uh, JMO tanks, I have a link to his channel. He just um, bought one the other day, so you could definitely check out his channel if you want to see how these guys look. But yeah, everybody, that was 20 catfish that I think are ideal for most aquariums. I know I myself, as of today, I can never keep a red tail catfish. I can never keep a tiger shovel nose catfish because these catfish just get way too big for most aquariums. These catfish that I listed, um, they're all perfect for most aquariums. It's not hard giving these guys a large aquarium, large enough for their full size potential. And um, these catfish will be happier. And at the end of the day, you the fish keeper will be happier. So if you know of any catfish that is ideal for most aquariums, let us know in the comment section below. I know that not only I like to look at the comments for the different things you say, but I know a lot of my viewers, we all look in the comments to see what other people suggest because we all um, play a part in this hobby. We all help each other. So yeah, if you've kept any catfish that you think fits this list, let me know in the comment section below and we'll all check it out. But yeah, um, as always, if you have any questions about what you saw today, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions that you want me to cover, you saw I, I covered three questions today. If you want me to cover other questions in a different video, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you want more, subscribe because we're in a fish room. We have a lot going on, a lot of awesomeness. I do have to give you guys a fish room update, but I want to wait until I get my shipments because I bought some fish, um, some pretty cool fish. And when those fish come in, um, I'll do the fish room update. But yeah, everybody, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you want more, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.